So today is the day that we're going to put the window in. It should be 50 degrees for the next 48 hours, hopefully. I wasn't sure exactly how to finish off this tarp, so I ended up just putting duct tape, like a frame. I punched holes through it. So I already sandpapered, a little sandpaper here, sandpaper the inside, sandpapered both sides on my plexiglass so it's nice and roughed up. Now I'm going to take some isopropyl alcohol, wipe this all down so we have a nice clean surface. Alright, we're also going to wipe down my window on both sides. Any kind of residue, any of that kind of stuff, this will take it right off. So that way the silicone has a nice clean surface. So this is the silicone I'm going to use. This happens to be Marine Land. Something I had just laying around, I got a couple tubes left, so I'm going to use it up. Truth be told, this is expensive. This was like $8 per tube. You can save yourself some money by going to like Home Depot or something like that and get some GE silicone one i'll try to put a picture of that over here the biggest thing is you just want a hundred percent silicone you do not want to have anything that is a that has like a mold inhibitor or anything like that just pure silicone nothing else all right so i'm just a one-man show and i only got about five minutes before this starts to skin over so i got to work fast i'll try to film what i can otherwise i'll have to show you at the end Stinky, stinky. Well, what a mess that was. I got silicone everywhere. So a little quick trip. Quick trip, haha. <laughs> a quick tip. Peanut butter. So. <sighs> So I'm dealing with silicone, trying to clean this off my hands, kind of a pain, but use a little bit of peanut butter. A little peanut butter. Make sure you rub it all in. Then after you're done with the peanut butter, just wash it off. I'm sure you're, you're shocked about that peanut butter tip, but it works, trust me. So fast forward like a month from putting this window in. We've had a heat wave here, and goldfish are cold water fish. This water got up to 90 degrees, so I was not comfortable putting them in there. But the stars have aligned, everything is working out, so I think today's the day we add the fish. So before we put the fish in here, there's a couple things we need to do. Yes, I do have an air stone. But secretly, in that black tote that you see over there, I've been running sponge filters for like the past, I don't know, at least two months. Getting the uh, beneficial bacteria colonized on there. So I'll take you over there and we'll take a look.
do have a piece of plywood on here and that is just to stop the algae growth so like i said i've been running this for like two months or so they're just sponge filters that way they can get colonized i have been throwing some fish food in here from time to time to help start the cycle and then i also have a bunch of this plant live plants which also be going in there which is obviously colonized as well so here's my air pump nothing fancy i just have it in this tote to keep it uh, water dry it's just one of them cheap chinese pumps they do work they're just extremely loud i definitely would not want this in my bedroom or even in my house if i had to listen to that but uh it's outside so you got the pump here and then I just have it running on like a, I think it's like a 3 8 hose. Running to a manifold with just my lines coming out of there. And then I was trying to go down four feet. But if I put this airline all the way to the bottom, it's not producing any bubbles. I think it's just, it's just too far for it to pump. So I think I'm going to have to put my air pump up here for now. That way it's up here and it's just going to be pumping straight down, which would be a lot easier on the pump. He always has to get his word in, doesn't he? So we put in the, uh, the sponge filters that have been running for two months. Technically, we should be good on beneficial bacteria, but before we add the fish, I'm gonna take one more step just to make sure. So we need to go to the fish room. So let's go. So these are the first five lucky guys that get to go in the 275. After I put these in, I'm gonna wait a week or so, and then I got a couple more goldfish to add. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off that little sponge filter there. We're gonna take off that sponge filter there. But first, we need to put some water in this bucket. So I just wanna grab this one here. Don't really wanna shake it up too, too much. Get it in the bucket. I want to do the same thing with the other one. So these are just like pre-filters before they go into the, uh, the hang on back filter. That's a hang on back filter. So these are just pre-filters to collect most of the junk. Same thing, I want to take this one out slowly without trying to lose too much of that good stuff. Put that in there. As you can see, it does kind of make a mess. So let's take that outside. So just want to take these, and we just want to squeeze the heck out of it. Yes, it's going to cloud up my water, make my water all dirty, but that is all good beneficial bacteria. That's also going to help seat the other sponge filters in here. And I'll be absolutely fine putting the fish in. One down, one to go. Usually I do this in a five gallon pail and it makes the five gallon pail look like chocolate milk. Because I'm doing this in a 200, or actually this is a 330 gallon. It doesn't seem to be dirtying up the water too, too much, but we'll take a look in a little bit. All right, so we wrung out the sponge filters that was in the aquarium of the goldfish to help add to the beneficial bacteria. I am now gonna add all the plant matter that was in that black tote, which is also covered with beneficial bacteria. It's pretty much all gonna float for now. 
eventually some of it will settle to the bottom. Maybe, maybe not with all this air moving around, it might keep it on the top. But either way, let's go grab the goldfish. So before we go grab the goldfish, this uh, dirty aquarium water, your plants will love it. So do not throw that away. Your plants will go ham for it. That is for sure. All right, let's go grab the goldfish. So I did check the water temperature. We're like 74-ish, 72, 74. And that is exactly what it is outside right now. So this is prime time. I am also gonna collect some of these snails. This is a pond snail. Some say they're invasive, yada, yada, yada. But they are good, they do their purpose. Also have some ram horn snails, which I'll put in there. This right here is a ram's horn snail. Let's catch the fish, shall we? We're gonna be in the splash zone. Just kidding, goldfish are pretty docile, kind of like a lab. They are the puppies of the water. So these two right here, these are comets. Just got one guy left. They call these fancy goldfish, fantail. They are a hybrid, man-made. Usually their bodies aren't all short like that. All right, let's bring these guys outside. So I'm not gonna net them out. I am just going to pour this bucket in there. It'd be a lot less stress on them. Plus I know my water is pretty identical. So the fish are in. I'm not sure what all got caught on the camera. Hopefully you've seen them go in. If not, we're gonna have to wait a little bit. Everything is kind of stirred up right now. Fish are gonna be a little stressed, but uh, give them some time to get uh, used to their new home. I'm sure they're gonna like it. Going from 55 gallons up to 330, I'm sure they'll be just fine. I am also gonna add four more goldfish in another week or two. I probably could do it right now, but uh, I'm going camping here pretty soon and they're a little bit smaller, so I wanna be able to be here to watch them. And then I also got some rubber nose plecos I'm going to be putting in here to help, hopefully, keep some of the algae down, at least on the plexiglass. If not, I'm going to just have to clean it by hand. No big deal. So let's give these guys a little bit, and we'll check them out a little bit later. All right, I'm doing a water change in my 125. Perfect time to get some of these bristle nose plecos. Got one like right here. And I'll find a couple more. All right, we got four of them. Let's go get this done before I overflow this tank and get more water on the floor. Before I put those in, it is nighttime now. I can still see my reflection, but the goldfish are definitely more active. How cool is that? Other than seeing me in the reflection. So this water is a little different. It's coming from a different tank. So technically I would not want to dump this straight in. Hopefully I can do this one-handed. Got my net here. It's inside out, less catching. One went out, still got three more to go.
So, so far we got five goldfish in here. We got four bristlenose plecos. I will be adding some driftwood, some driftwood in here for the plecos to hide. Although I see some of them are hiding up in the plants, which is good. Either way, I'll add some driftwood so they feel a little bit more at home. And hopefully they take care of the LG on the glass for me. Time will tell on that one. So that pretty much completes the uh, DIY IBC tote. The only thing I would have to do now, and to be honest, I'm not sure if I'm going to get to it this season, but I would like to build something on top there where I can put, I don't know, 8 or 12 easy swap pots, have a pump, pump water up there, kind of like hydroponic style, grow some food, and kind of be a filter and drain back in. Like I said, it's already almost, uh, what, middle of June, late June, so... Probably not going to happen because plants should have been in by now, but that'll be definitely be a project for next season. Kind of late on that one. This was a big undertaking, but I'm glad I got this far. There's always next season to build the garden bed on top. Until next time, peace. <laughs>